all right thank you guys thank you for all your support thank you for the motivation uh, today we are going to talk about another uh, special feature in salesforce it belongs to the standard salesforce rest api and we call it as a composite resource uh, today i have chosen this topic because salesforce in the forthcoming release in the winter 21 release uh, salesforce is going to give us a new way of dealing with composite apis and it's called as the composite graph api uh, we also have the official blog uh, on the salesforce developers blog uh, and i would highly request you to go through uh, go through this blog because it gives you a general understanding of why do we need to have uh, an enhancement on top of uh, the already existing the graph api so it will take around 10 minutes and i highly request everybody to go through this documentation i'm going to put a link in the description uh, so please definitely go through it however it is also very important to understand the existing setup that we have why do we have the composite api is the first question and we must understand this before we even talk about enhancement so in this video i'm simply going to take a few minutes to exactly show you why do we need composite api there are different parts of composite api but we are going to stick towards one very uh, significant part of the composite api all right so let's imagine a, a situation uh, a scenario uh, for example let's say order and order line items and as the name suggests and as in in general business processes you know that uh, an order line item cannot exist without the existence of the order right so you always have to have the order and then you can and then you can have the line items and we often fall um, under such situations when uh, we have to create the order and order line items using the apis it could be MuleSoft, it could be Postman, or it can be anything, as a matter of fact. But the catch here is that uh, you have to ensure that you are only creating order line items once you have a successful uh, confirmation from Salesforce that the order has already been created. It does not make sense to have two separate processes, one for order creation and one for order line items, because there is then no guarantee that what would happen uh, to the order line items if the order was failed uh, during the creation. So we have to ensure somehow that the process is is executed synchronously uh, in, in the same context, in the same transaction, uh, so that if the order creation fails, every order line item connected to that order also fails. So this is to uh, maintain the data consistency and to ensure that we are not uh, by mistake or unintentionally creating order line items without even uh, creating the order at the first place. So what I have done here, I have created a very simple object called sales order and I have also created a very simple object called sales order line items. And the relationship between them is quite simple. Again, master details. So uh, sales order line items uh, is on the detail side and the sales order object is on the master side. And that's all we have one additional field on sales order line item called quantity but here i don't want to demonstrate the data model rather i'm only here to talk about how can we create uh, both uh, sales order and sales order line items in one api call all right so let's go to workbench so i have already logged into my workbench instance today i'm going to use workbench not using postman or soap ui uh, and uh, I'm going to REST Explorer and this is how you uh, get your first screen. I'll click on execute and this is where Salesforce is going to give us the list of all the services that's, that they support. We are interested in the uh, composite API. So where is the composite API? So this one is the composite. So when you click on composite, uh, Salesforce is going to give you uh, three different um, um, API endpoints, three batch and S objects. Today we are only interested on composite. We are not talking about batch. We are not talking about trees, but we are only going to stick towards the composite part of the API. All right, guys, so we are back to the workbench. Um, so uh, as I said before, composite API is a special API which is used to execute a series of API calls, dependent API calls. Uh, and uh, one of the biggest uh, feature, sorry, one of the biggest uh, advantage of doing this is that it reduces the number of round trip API calls between the client and the Salesforce, which is obviously a very good practice uh, when you talk about the architectural uh, benefit. So here I'm going to uh, find the composite API, which is uh, right here. 
so click on this one and then we can see the other uh, other api endpoints that composite provides we have the three batch ns objects we are not going to look into these three today but we are only interested to uh, work on the uh, core composite api so i'll click on post and here you have to provide the request body now in this example i have already created the request body and we will uh, talk about every uh, every element present in this json but this is how it looks like so the most important uh, part in this json is the composite request this is where you have to specify what are the series of api calls what are the series of those requests that you want to execute in one api call and you can see it's a uh, it's an array of uh, all the uh, records so composite request is an array and here you can pass on multiple records so this is my record number one this is record two and this is record three now don't treat record to exactly one row in salesforce here we are only trying to trying to demonstrate that uh, composite request is an is an array that can contain multiple sub requests so we can also we also say we, we also call these uh, uh, api calls as sub requests so uh, the meaning is quite simple so first we create we make a post method on this url so this is the rest api endpoint for the object which is the header object the master object sales order on the on the on the master side uh, we have to always provide a reference id so here the reference id is new sales order we will see why reference id is important then in the body exactly you pass on the details of the field so we only have one field currently on this object so we will only specify name here now you can imagine that uh, salesforce is going to execute this uh, request first and obviously uh, uh, this request will be successful because there is no error here so salesforce is going to create a sales order with name as this and uh, the variable the uh, the result will be stored in this variable called new sales order all right then salesforce is going to perform a second operation called get and it is going to uh, use this new sales order um, uh, variable to create the url uh, for the next request right so for for the get operation we have a new reference id and obviously we have to create the url uh, the rest api endpoint url so uh, this is how you would create it so you always have to pass on the record id uh, after the object name so this will return uh, the uh, the field values uh, from this record and then the third operation is again a post operation because we have to create a new sales order line item record so we again have a new reference id new sales uh, oli we don't need to use it any further because there is no any dependent request after this but again the meaning is quite simple url uh, we are using uh, the rest api endpoint uh, providing the name of the object here and then the body is quantity which is just 20 and the sales order which is a master detail field so this is a master detail field which expects the salesforce record id which is a sales order record id and, and we are getting the sales order record id using this parameter order info please remember whenever you have to use a variable uh, going further you always have to specify the variable in this format so now we know that this this variable uh, when this is returned by salesforce id parameter or id field will be present in the json and that's why we can use order info dot id uh, to retrieve the ID value and pass on the value to the master detail field here. Okay, so I have copied the value and I'm going to paste it here. Uh, let's just expand this one. The value is two and everything is fine. And opt all or none is true, which means that the request will only process if there is no error in the entire request. So let's see what happens. So execute yeah it is done i'll click on show all response and the response is again uh okay it was a success the id has been generated in the header we have the location of the uh, record which was created and then the second request which is a get operation this one it returned all the fields uh, present on the sales order header record 
and then the third request is again a post request and we can see that the id has been generated right and the status code is 201 for all of them so the response is quite good let's see uh, let's go inside salesforce i'm going to copy this id which is the id of the sales order and i'm simply going to paste it here sorry the id is wrong so delete this one yeah yes all right so we have the result here the order has been created and this was the name of the order that we passed and in the related section we can also see that the uh, order line item was also created so now the problem is solved uh, uh, we can create sales order and sales order line item in one request and at the same time we can ensure that the data consistency is maintained so let's do one more thing let's try to simulate an error deliberately all right so i'm back to my uh, back to my request here so what i'm going to do here is just simply remove this field and this field is a mandatory field because it's a master detail field so um, salesforce will never allow creation of any record if the master field is blank right so let's try that let's click on execute and see the response yeah so we have the right response the transaction was rolled back since another operation in the same transaction failed and here we can also see the transaction was rolled back message and required field was missing which is the sales order field however if we replace true by false then um, which it means that salesforce is going to have a partial uh, uh, success uh, it will allow partial success and click on execute again and we can see that yeah we have no error we the sales order was created but the sales order line item was not created now this is not a very appropriate way to uh, handle this because we always want sales order and sales order line item to be created in one transaction so don't do this guys but here i was only trying to demonstrate that uh, we um, i mean there is a way to also handle the partial uh, updates requirement let's go back to salesforce and sales order and here we can see that uh, yeah one more got created i should have changed the name and there is no line item yeah delete this one now since we understand uh, what is a composite uh, rest api resource uh, i would suggest you guys to go through this uh, go through the official documentation the official salesforce developer documentation and make yourself aware uh, and and try to practice more yourself but here uh, from architectural point of view uh, this is one api that should always be in our mind whenever we are talking about executing dependent request now if now if there is a mule soft in 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 the whole architectural standpoint then uh, there is no need to worry about the uh, tiny nuances uh, like this because mule soft will definitely be able to handle this itself because they have the connector and the connector has been designed in such a way that it is able to take care of all these dependency and uh, the, 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 the details behind the scenes. But this is more important to remember uh, when you are working with an integration system or when you are working with an integration platform that doesn't have a standard connector and then you have to really work with the developers to create those APIs from the scratch. And you as a Salesforce expert must be aware of these features uh, that we have because we will be acting as assistant to help those uh, integration developers build those APIs. All right. So please uh, let me know if, if the video was good enough. It's a very short video, but I thought that we should definitely discuss this topic before we actually dig deeper into the graph API. And I'm definitely going to uh, create another video on that topic. But it's good to have this information beforehand so we know what is the context and, and why Salesforce is uh, trying to bring uh, the Graph API. Uh, but yeah, so uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, talk to you again soon.